Okay, I'm Buzz. I'm Rob. That's Rob. And that's Larry. We decided to do something. We decided to do something different today because, you know, who wants to watch things on a lathe go round and round? And <laughs> scroll saw blade going up and down, people twisting. I'm going to make like something. For a while. Make something big. Make something fun. Get the cell phones away from the kids. So, move on, Larry. No, not yet. I'll let you know. <laughs> Can you see it, Art? Could you go back one? I forgot something. This is uh, this project is based on an article by this woman. Never met her, Jennifer Largess of Build Basic. We got the plans from like a Home Depot site and they did their plans and cut list and wood list kind of like you're shopping at Home Depot and buying pieces of wood. But all you guys have the tools. As we go through this I know Ralph's gonna go well, I can do that in my CNC and I just go, I'll do that on the scroll saw. And <laughs> you know how it is. And we got the, the turners will go, I'll make the disc, I'll turn a log and cut the disc off. We know that. <laughs> but we have this kind of stuff. So we kind of morphed their plans a little bit and we did it our kind of way, pretty much the same. So ready, this time you can turn the page. All the tools used. <laughs> okay. We used, obviously, to make that project, you have to cut holes in plywood. So we tried a cordless drill. Yeah. Didn't really have the strength, at least the smaller one, these. You'd be changing a lot of batteries. So we went with this, a Bosch half-inch drive and this hole saw. We used a miter saw for the legs and the framing parts. We used, we, didn't, we used a pen nailer, not necessarily a nail gun, we used a pen nailer. We used a Craig jig to fasten some of the frame parts together. We used a framing square that you'll see in a minute. Now the plans that you get from Home Depot, they want you to use a four inch and a five inch hole saw because they had the people cutting five inch discs with a five inch hole saw. Well, there's 35 of them on there, it'd take you a while. So we used a band saw, a table saw, and we used a planer because they're, they're having people buy, you know, like half inch by half inch square dowels and one by two wood and one by three wood. No, we're gonna make our own dimensions and we planed it down. Some of the things I planed down to half inch to make it a lighter piece. Okay, Larry. So here's your basic wood. Quarter inch is what we use. We use this here. This is quarter inch underlayment from Home Depot, which looked pretty good in the store, but after we drill the holes, you go, you know, we should have spent the money and got Baltic birch, mm -hmm. something that doesn't shred so bad. But see, like I said before, on that cut list, they're telling you to go to the section in Walmart where you already have the cut plywood that's two feet by four feet and buy two of those. Well, no. We're going to buy a sheet of plywood and we're going to cut it to be 26 inches by 41 inches. So we made for this demonstration, we obviously, we made two games, enough parts for two. 
you guys, unless you have a lot of grandchildren and are real energetic, probably only make one. So this is what you need to make one game. Anyway, we have the plywood, of course. Then see they have four one inch by three inch by eight foot boards for the legs and the tray. Ooh, my pointer. For the legs and that tray. Six half inch by five eighths inch by 26 inch square dowels is what they used to say there. Which is, I don't know, have you ever seen a square dowel at Home Depot? Okay. Well, we decided that really wasn't feasible, so we made our own. The half inch by two inch by three foot hobby board. See there again, that's the Home Depot thing. You're gonna go buy one by twos. We use some rare earth magnets, which we'll get to later. Magnet cup holder and screws. Pocket screws, the Craig jig. The finished nails, like I said, we used, we actually used screws. We had used countersunk screws and we stained it. You could paint it, you could stain it, you could leave it natural if you want. Okay, next slide. So, using the cut list, we started cutting the plywood pieces to size. We plane the, wait a minute. Larry, you want to go to the pictures? Yep. Let's go to that. Okay, we bought two sheets of this underlayment, which is four by eight sheets, so we used the track saw. Notice how we, we have four in that pile right there. So we put it on sawhorses, taped it at the corners so nothing would shift, so when we made that cut, everything was gonna stay even. Got ahead of yourself there, son. Okay, there's one cut off. That's the, that'd be 26 inches by four feet. Then we went to, then we cut it down to 41 inches. That's what Rob's doing. Next. Okay, now's where it gets. Okay. Before we get past there, on the, when we're using the plywood itself, we, like, we made it off a quarter inch. We found it afterward that was really kind of a benefit if you would make it thicker. We're thinking you're better off with three eighths because by the time we got done with it and we put the stain on it, it kind of swelled up some and we had a hard time uh, trying to clean off the inside of that thing because it was so thin. So a 3 8 plywood would have been better. Pl Baltic birch would have been a lot better than this because you could take a 5x5 five five piece of Baltic birch and make one set out of that and it'd be a better quality because we had so much tear out using the hole saw even after we sanded it and we put the finish on it, it still had trouble putting the game pieces through it for a while because it, you know, the tear out was getting caught on it. You find you had voids in that stuff too in the plywood? We, we didn't, didn't find any voids, voids per se. It just tore out bad. But we would have liked to have run a little bit of a round over around each hole. Right. So if we had three eighths before we glued it together, we could have run, run a like a little bit of a quarter inch round over on both sides, and you couldn't do that with the way it was because. And this, you know, this quarter inch will work, and you got you'll be seeing in a minute here that there's ribs in here, so it's not going to warp. It, it's stable once you put it all together. Would hard board have worked? Mm -hmm. As long as it's inside, it would have worked fine. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying, I mean, Well, you know, like I said earlier, some people like Ralph, he's gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna cut that out on my... No, he'll, yes. Ralph is gonna do it. He's gonna, gonna laser cut it out, He's gonna cut it out of acrylic. Well, he could do that too. You read my mind or what? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's, then gonna, you have a scene. he's gonna make them and sell them. Another thing I'll say, because I was thinking about it last night, you can make this any size. You can make a, a real nice little one for a tabletop or something. Or you can buy the plastic game that came out. Yeah, you can buy years. these. You, there's probably, I would bet you there's an app. There's probably a Connect 4 app somewhere. You can use your phone. Okay, we want to go to the pictures on this one now? 
So here's our plywood, and I don't know if you can see it very good, but there's our little marks. And can there's turn our the spotlights off itself. Okay. Hit those two right there and it was, it was too hard to see with a big sheet, but we had to go out there. We looked at the measurements of what they had, and we tried that, and we had to set it up with all the grids, all the different stuff on it to make sure that the pucks, everything that we do there is going to be dependent on the size that you made, I keep calling them pucks, on uh, the game pieces. If you make it an eighth inch too big or bigger than what the measurement is, you're going to have to make your frame a little bit bigger because it's got to fit right down the slot when we get to yep. it. There. And when these are five inch disc, four inch hole. So the object is when the, the discs go down the little slot, they end up, you end up seeing it in the hole. Could, could you show us another one? Yeah, we could. Like that. Okay. The, the big reveal. You, you could take the disc with you. Driver, move that bus. Okay. Yay. But the way that is, when you put the disc in there and they drop down the bottom, if you got that disc too small, you're going to have a gap, an opening on the top. So you had to make sure we hit exactly where we wanted to on there. So this is what the layout's all about. Where to drill all those holes. So we're going to do a little quick test here. If you have five holes and you have five five-inch discs, what's the distance? 25 Over inches 25 plus. Inches. Very good. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Actually, the plan called for 25, but I think that's so that when you put this in, there'd be like a little bit sticking out. We didn't like that, so we made it 26. But that's how it's supposed to work. Pretty, pretty close tolerance. There's a little bit of play there, but not a lot. You want to lay it out just right so you don't end up with what you, what you want to get away with when you don't want to have when you get to the top is to have it um, like that. Or the other way. Or yeah, or the other way. Right. So you, a little bit of layout work to do there. Kept me and Rob busy for an hour or two. So once you laid it out, you take a center punch very carefully and you punch your little cross hairs and then you drill remember I got four sheets stacked up now so I I drilled not all the way through but just down a little bit with probably this drill bit or something like that so that when I started, this is the four inch hole saw. So because we know you like excitement, we're going to actually draw a hole. So let's pretend my old crosshair is right here. Now this is four pieces sandwiched together. And when we did it, we had all four pieces laying on the saw like this, using the fence. We had it raised up in the air. I did not drill into the table saw. That's good. I yes. still worried about it. He only had he it raised up about, about this much. <laughs> we raised it up. We had the four seats. We pin nailed it in some strategic locations because you don't want this moving. So here I am drilling down a little bit. That's just a... That's just to get the hole saw started in the right place without it drifting at all. So I got my little pilot hole. As I drill, I kind of move it around a little bit like that. And I also put a mark on here. Can't really see it anymore after 35 holes, but it was right there. That's showing when I 
pop through. But I, I went down a little bit at a time. See, I've already got one out. There it is. Here you go, Hans. You like to do this. There you go. We had 70 of those in a big old pile. I think it's got to be used for that. We thought about it, and I ended up throwing We thought about them giving them to Hans to make ornaments or something, but I think Rob burned them. I burned them. Now, one thing I did, one thing I did when I was drilling these 35 holes so I tried to figure out with limited success which was going to be the good side and which was going to be the inside that you don't see so much. So I could put them face to face, try to eliminate the tear out. And if you had Baltic birch ply, it would be much better. When you said strategically nail it, did you, did you pin, nail, pin nail every circle? No. Because you saw what I did there, I drilled down a little bit and then I pulled the piece out. Okay. I drilled down a little bit more and pulled another piece out. I thought about doing it in the middle. That's a good idea. Yeah, but it could make it harder to get those pieces out. So this is how we were getting the parts out. See, they're coming out. Oh no, I think if it was all nailed together, it'd be hard. But you wouldn't get the tear. Just, well, may I offer a suggestion? Well, you can try. I'm concerned about tearing. This, the bit extends past the face of this saw. So if you only go down until this protrudes out the bottom, and then, and turn, then it turn it over and come in from the other side, you won't get all that tear out. Yep. Well. Or put a backer board on it. Our concern with the tear out wasn't for the discs. Our concern for the tear out was the board itself, which is going to be held together through the whole process. And remember, too. <coughs> I'm doing four boards. If you're just doing these two, you can put the two good faces facing each other in real tight, and then you could nail this hole. Four boards a little bit more difficult. There's a little bit of tear out inside here. It's not going to kill you. And use better plywood. Oh, see, these, these discs don't have any tear out. This is the one that's on the bottom. This has the tear out. Exactly. So if you don't go, if you don't the other thing, all the way through it, the it. other thing to do, see, because this is like our first go around doing this, the other thing you do is you put a whole nother piece of plywood underneath there. A backer board, very good. Okay, we got to... Move stuff out of the way when done. Now, as you can see, when I was drilling, that's why we used the saw, to keep this all square. Make sure it didn't move. Clamped. And then as I drilled the holes, I was using the framing square to kind of make sure they were lined up. I want to get this done and have it kind of wobbly. So I'd check every few holes. And it came out pretty good. We're making the the discs, the pucks, the pieces, whatever you want to call them. We made these a half inch thick. I ran boards through the planer to a half an inch, cut squares. This is poplar. We use poplar and then some of the discs we use pine. This is for the next game. We used yellow and orange. This is pine. So there we go. Planed it, gave it to Rob, let him cut it on the band saw, close, and we made, we were shooting for, there's 35 holes. We don't think you're ever going to use 35, but it's a possibility. There you go. Now we cleaned up, once we did that, we're cleaning up to make a perfect circle. So Larry, you want to show that? Or we can just, how are we going to do it? Right. Yeah, go ahead. So we just made a, <coughs> you ready for this? We made a circle, Jay. <laughs> 
of the ice pack. And what I'm doing here is measuring the distance from the bit to the center of this pin. This pin goes right there on top of that circle. If you look straight down this pin in this circle, it's easy to put them on the, the circle. I was actually shining a flashlight through this look underneath. That got to be really tedious. But turn on the drill, I mean the Roller. router. Slide this in. There's a stop here that stops at exactly five inches. Run it through the router counterclockwise. To answer your question though, I went outside the line on the bandsaw with each one. And even if you went right on the side and you were careful, you would have had to by hand sand all the parts. This way, I didn't have to do them. You know, we had 70 of them to, to do. So. Okay. Now we're going to the ribs. Ribs are right here. They were suggesting you use a half inch by half inch ribs. And we went to the 5 8 we were a little bit above the half inch when we did it, but we found it was tight at that, so we moved it to, you know, to five eighths when we did the second set here. So the trick here, the Home Depot plan said half inch by half inch, square dowel. Well, yeah, you could do that, and you could plane these down to a little bit less than a half inch. That might work, but we decided. This one is with 9 sixteenths by half inch. But then we decided to be on the safe side. Our next one, we were going to go with 5 eighths tall by half inch wide. Six of them. So what you have is you have two end pieces. These are 5 eighths by an inch and 3 quarters wide. And that's going to go right there. On the first one we did, we had it laying on the saw and we were measuring pen nails to go. You know, we wanted to put glue on here and hold it from this side. That's actually what we did. We, we had it over here, and then we had a spacer in between. We got this one, we pin nailed it, just enough to go in here and go through the first board. But when we did the second one, we wanted it taller so they could slide it through there. The pin nails were not the right size that would go through here and here. We had to use longer ones, which would have been sticking out the bottom. So we decided to change our method. We put these down, glued it, pin nailed them onto there, put a spacer on, and went to the next row, next row, all the way across. Are we going to physically do this? Yes. When, when we're, you don't put, that goes on, that, on the top when we're done with all the, the boards. No, we got to put it on. The, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. No. You're right. We're doing it backwards from what we did last time. What we did last time, we pinned out through that. We found out we can't do it this way. So this time, we're going to set them yep. all up, put the board on top of it for the bottom piece, and then we will glue and pin nail those on. So these are out of our scrap plywood, cut a little bit wider than five inches. So we got our end piece on there. Put that one there. Grab another rib. Eight inches, About, yeah. So you have a sixteenth of an inch on each side. So you got to make sure you're putting it on the right way with the five eighths being up and down. You don't want to put it on that way, mess everything up. Somewhere in the demo it says five and an eighth. Five and an eighth? Oh, yes, I, I see what eight. you're saying. Yes. Yeah, it's all based on your puck itself. So as we're doing that, we're, we're testing. See, there's what you got. Can you see that, Dan? A little bit of room there. Got a little bit of play, but not too much play. At this point, we want to make sure we're right perfect on the bottom on all of these, because they're not going to move again after we're done.
We should slip that bottom one out before we... Uh, yeah, we'll get it. <laughs> he did reference that when we were done uh, doing it earlier that I'm not using the Rob's method. <laughs> well, well wait. depends on where you are. If you're at your shop, I mean, you got plenty of wood. Actually, here's I, the thing, though. You don't. I have to get more right now. <laughs> you only have a little bit of space in here. You don't want a bunch of globs of glue sticking out, and then your disc won't go through. It's not like and a it's not, special type of thing. Yeah, it's not a deck or anything, you know? Something yeah, you, haven't, you haven't mentioned, but it seems to me that every dimension counts on the size of the discs. Yep. And it would seem like the first thing you want to do is cut your discs. Exactly. And have them all ready so that as you put these in and you test and you we try pretty much we pretty much that's did that's the order of the presentation i was drilling i did the actually holes. mention that a little while ago. i was okay. drilling the holes and he was cutting the discs larry was doing I, it I this mean, wasn't all done in the day yeah if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, I keep glue in here um no, yes I, sir I was we just saying even before you cut the holes in that sheet you want we to did. cut the disc and we did test them. it was all based on the size of the disc okay. That's, you know, like I said earlier, that's, if you wanted to make one that was half size, you're just going to have to shrink everything. And if you have the disc, that helps you figure it out. I think you guys that are big time furniture makers could make a real beautiful desktop model for executives and politicians to play with. <laughs> I'm sorry, politicians do not connect no. to work. <laughs> they have to be connect one. You know, okay. They're not bright enough. The board with a single hole in it? Yeah. <laughs> They'll screw it up. It's 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 but. I was all the way between there, but that wall was a bad word I didn't yeah. talk about. <laughs> Was well, there a reason why you didn't put no glue on that one there? Is that a, this one? That one. Oh, I got enough on there. You don't have any glue on there. I oh, do. Look at that. This. Oh, yeah, I did miss one, didn't I? Yeah, nobody's perfect. That's why we have quality control over here. Yeah, quality glue control. If you're making it for politicians, you have to make it with a disc change. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, every three years they have to change their decisions. Then it would never go together. <laughs> okay, so just so you guys are going to reiterate this, what we did before is we tried to fasten these and clamp them gently and then turn the whole thing over and nail from the top. And then we got to thinking the other day, what are we doing? We'll just lay it on like this and then take the other board. If we actually found the pin nails that would have worked, we probably yeah. wouldn't have figured out to do it this way, so. Stand your baseboard. Stand your baseboard. Now what you want to make sure is you put this the right way. It was right. Just turn it up, turn your other end up. Okay. Now there's less distance on the bottom than it is the top. Yeah. Same problem with our shop. No. If we wanted to have problems, we would have brought the dogs. <laughs> what? On this side. Or even on the bottom. We don't, we don't care. Okay. Because okay. when this is nailed and glued and dried, we'll trim it on the table saw. Yeah, it'll be fine. Because there's a little bit of plywood sticking out here too. We eh? we will trim okay, that. If you're all step. Okay, then we brought our straight edge somewhere here. Oh, there it is. This is not a good time to miss the rib with okay, your we need to put them nailer. 
This one's sticking out farther than there. So we have to line it all up again. Okay, that's good now. Put a nail in it and then we'll be done with okay, that. Okay, it's not good on this end. Well, okay, but we're not there yet, son. Let's do this one and then we'll go from the rest. Okay, you go this way then. Yep. You told me that'd be enough air. Not enough air. I'm not sure if it's good or not. No, it's, it's, it's holding it. I'd be upset if this thing's not working. Okay, go up that, put four on that side. That's four, is that okay? Yeah. I'm gonna put five in there. Connected. Connect four. Okay, where do you want me to we put need, this? We need to rotate this thing, because we're down lower. What do you mean? You see what I'm touching here? We put this one in. Okay, that's good there. Remember, this is the bottom, it's no big deal. I gotta get to one on the other side. We didn't exactly need to have this version of a gun. Can but I finally got little, it out to use it the other can day. Can you put a little pencil mark where the center of each rib is over there? While you guys are doing this question, did you give any thought to cutting the discs using a hole saw? Yes. Did you? Well, yeah. Well, the, the thought was we could do it with a hole saw. You'd have the hole in the middle, and we were just going to put a dissimilar right. plug into the center, so right. it looked different. It would look, yeah, we did do that. Is the Home de okay. That is the Home Depot version. Okay. Because in the plans that, that we got, they say to buy quarter-inch plywood for this, and then buy a two-by-four sheet of half-inch plywood for okay. the disc. So that's what they were planning. Use plywood and use a five-inch hole saw. That's good. You got to be careful doing this. This is where you don't want your pen nail to go out of the wood because it'd be hard to get out. Okay, so those are all nailed on. Now what we did what we did is we stained this on the inside and the outside. What we did is we took some green tape, covered these all up, so when we stained it, it'd glue to the next piece. We won't bother you with that. And we did the same thing with this piece, where we put a line on it, we laid that on there and put a line where we put green tape here, so I kept it bare wood for gluing purposes. We did use the stain on it, which raised the paneling quite a bit, you know, that I wasn't too happy with, so if you wanted to use the paint, we brought some milk paint as it shows a demo, because we used that for the the game pieces, we put that on to smooth it out and that way it actually everything slid better. We might use that on the inside when we go to put this panel on, or on the whole thing rather than using the stain. Yeah, this is a paint I get, I use on shabby chic furniture, you know, you use, it's a latex, cleans up with water, you thin it, you, this will go quite a ways. I mean, there's still a lot in here. What's, what's our next step? There's still a lot in here after Rob painted all those. Once you got that built, next thing to do is the legs. Pretty simple. This is three feet tall. We like three feet because for adults, you could have it sitting on a table like this and still play it. For kids, you put it on the floor. Or even for adults, you could put it on the floor. But my old guy over there, he worried about old people having to bend over. Actually, it worked out great on the table. And I Mainly we were going to use this for kids and stuff anyway, so 
they'll be happy with it like that. You know, I, I didn't do it, but I thought in this presentation, so I figured I'd attach an extension cord to it to fool the kids thinking that it does it have Bluetooth. Yeah. These are these are the parts for a leg. Well, you don't need these one. are the ones. I'm just showing them the parts now. So that's what it takes for a leg. Now you notice these legs I did a little bit different. That that one kind of goes down. It's a triangle. This one I did a different look for it. Well, that's what it takes. A three-foot piece, of, it's three inches wide, a three-foot piece, and then four one-foot pieces that you put the proper 45 on and all that. And it just so happens, because we didn't want you to have to watch us do the Craig screw thing. Anybody done know how to use a Craig screw jig? Raise your hand. Poor guy. Where are the other pieces that have the crate right there in them? So what I did is I put all the Craig screw holes on one side, except that one where I goofed up. Or you could buy a thousand dollar domino. Yeah, you could do that. Hey, you could dovetail this thing together if you want. I don't care. <laughs> so like all projects, guys, you do whatever you want. Okay, you ready, Rob? Sure. We've got a glue again. I hate getting glue on the table, though. Uh. You're not worried? If you're not worried, I'm not worried. No, I'm not worried. Oh, yeah. I'm wipe it off. I use these on the workbench to kind of keep everything. When you're by yourself, which I was at the time, Craig screwing is fine, but you gotta keep all the pieces straight. Now we could do the whole clamp thing, but since there's, I have an assistant, we'll just kind of hold it, I hope. Glue, please. There we go. Uh, Blue place. <laughs> sure, you got glue on that? Yeah. Okay, Rob, you hold that nice and tight and down and everything. You ready? Yep. You sure? A low flex, low. Let's do that one. Let me get out of this side. Of course he is. That's Rob. Of course he's going to glue it. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy if we didn't put glue on it. I've never been too faithful to uh, Craig screws anyway. I especially don't like it when you use it without it, and a lot of people don't ever use glue on it, so it's just a matter of personal taste. Are we, are we? All right. But this is going to work on this angle here. Okay, I'm going to have to hold and you're going to have to screw this one. Got it? Yep. A little bit more. Followed their instructions. No reason. 
No, I was just asking hey. the instructions. So I was going to get a welder and do it with pipe, but hey, <laughs> I'm a woodworker. <laughs> Good enough. We can sand this later. CNC doesn't even need chips. Exactly. Hey, you know, we're working with a half lab joint there. You could get Ralph and he'll cut you all the pieces and you just put them together. Okay. I'd have a jig for that. Yeah, you would. <laughs> a fixture, I'm sorry. But in a thousand. I think that did it. Now what I did on this one is I kind of staggered my holes. On that one, you can't really see it, but I tried to put them in the same place. Well, with only three inches, you can't really do that. But it worked. It's standing still, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. I'll have to get some paper towels. Can I do the end first? Sure. Hey, Larry. While they're working on this, what is the game? What's the point of the game? Um, it's very tic tac toe. Two yeah, in a row. it's like tic tac toe. Wait, right order. I mean, finish my statement. You're familiar with this pack. Three in a row. This is an extension of that where you put four discs in a row. And since you've got a you got to do it. screen to play on, it's four across, it. up, down, vertical, horizontal, any way you can get four discs in, in a row. Present? Yes. Connect so, four. All right, let's pick that up so I can get the glue off. Okay, so voila. I can see right now we're going to need a little sanding. But what I, what I did when I got to this point, I put a slight round over on these edges, and I just took the whole thing to the router. And with the round over bit with a bearing on it, just kind of went around these edges. I didn't try to get inside this triangle. But you can just round over both sides real quick. Give you a better surface. And then because we're professional, we put these things in it. So it wouldn't look funky. These are gonna these aren't poplar ones. I was happy with them. I'm sure some of you have used the Craig thing, you know, that you, you glue them in the exposed holes, and I'm not going to do it today because I'm not going to round it over. Well, you, you glue them in, sometimes you got to tap them with a hammer a little bit, and then when they're dry, you come in with this thing and flush them off. Ain't nothing but a deal. And as you can see, I changed the like I said before, I changed the leg design a little bit. It's not pointy, it's a little bit wider stance. I can see you're all excited about that. <laughs> now we're not going to drive you nuts by building it. And I know I'm going to get those, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? Because it's just a toy. Excuse me. That's your next thing. Oh, secure the legs. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> On this one, all we did was flush to the top. Let me bring it over there. Let me bring it over there. Excuse me. What we did on this is we just, it's flush with the top, the legs in the top of this, 
we just put three screws countersunk on each side. Got an inch and a quarter screw is all it takes. And then I put these little plugs in there. I didn't glue them in in case someday I wanted to pull those off and unscrew it and put it in storage because the grandkids don't like it. And then down here, down here we mounted this tray. This tray is to capture the discs. Now that's made out of right here. All I did the, in the instructions, because like I said before, it's a Home Depot type of project. They tell you to buy one by threes and join them together to make the bottom. But this is the stuff like I planed it down. So I got a piece that's six inches wide, six or seven, I forget exactly what it is. But anyway, and I just butt jointed it. You got two sides, you got two ends. Just butt, butt jointed it with pen nails to make the basic tray. It's not going anywhere because it's captured in between the legs. And then I was done to make it look pretty. I put it on the router table after it was built and dried and just went around the whole bottom edge right here on the ends and everything. And the top, I did the same thing. I kind of turned it over and went around the whole edge. And then I took the box and put it over the router bit and did the inside edge. It's just a little round over, it's no big deal. I think I used a push block. <laughs> <laughs> and safety glasses. <laughs> Okay, now the instructions, what is the obvious thing you guys want to know now? Come on. How do you get, how do you get the disc out of there? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. There you go. They tell you to buy hinges, but that's not good enough for us. <laughs> they tell you to buy hinges and put them like right here. One there and one over there. But we didn't like that. And then a magnetic catch. But we decided that wasn't good enough because we're going at woodworkers. So we developed this thing which is hinged like so. So when you open it up, they all come sliding out or lickety split right in the tray. And this is what I used. So one by three, and I put a threaded insert inside each end, and then your screw. There's the layout for it right there. So that is hinged. Let's see if they can see it. Right there, that screw. Now obviously you have to put a hole for that screw and I agonized over that for a few minutes. I said, well, I'll just make a, what do you call that, Larry? A jig that I could put up against the bottom and slide it over and I'd know where to put my hole to drill my hole into that. And I drilled the hole a little bit bigger than that screw, so there's a little bit of adjustment. See how that wiggles a little bit? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Now also we have, when this goes back up, look how well that holds. What's going on there? This took some experimentation, and I hope it works today, but we played a whole game of this, and that, that holds, and that's because we put magnetic cups countersunk into this piece of wood with a rare earth magnet in it, 
Actually, we did two of those, one at each end. And we tried that, it didn't work. We put some discs in there and it just swung open. But what we did is we added a couple more in the middle, but we're not sure if that's really required. But what we decided to do was put another. Where'd you come from? Can't see this very really well, Dan, but we drilled into the bottom of this. Actually, I guess we can get this thing over here and kind of show them. We had enough room when this thing was put together to drill a little 5 8 hole right here and put another magnet cup in there. So it's magnet to magnet. And then we even put two more in the middle. We did put epoxy in it to hold them in place. Yeah, we decided that we were going to glue them because we had instances where we were folding this down and it pulled the magnet out with it. The other thing we did is we added these. See, there's the other two magnets. One there, one there. There's a corresponding magnet up in here. And then we washer. added these. Washer. No washer, okay. And we added these little bumpers because Larry said it was too noisy. Oh, so those are rubber bumpers? Yeah. Baby bumpers. Okay. yeah. There was two reasons for that, though. When we put all these things in there. If we did a full, full it, row. You have an opening a little bit between there. The top was showing the, yes. like the crest on here. So we put these little bumpers. We were going to put pieces of wood like popsicles sticking on the bottom so it would hold it up a little bit. Putting the bumper on it, it didn't make as much noise when it slammed down with, with the bumper in it. And it did raise it up a little so it fit perfect on there. It also kept the disc falling, putting so much pressure on the door opening because it gave it a, a bump. Oh, the release knob? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is, this is Larry's idea. That's so, the average person, this is a Rob thing, really. Just go, well, how, how are they going to know which side it's hinged on? Hey, it's Rob. Well, if somebody's not looking at the end, you won't see this. And we figured it out, with the stand up so you didn't have to bend over, we could take your foot and just tap this and it would open up. But if they tap on this side, they're going to tear gonna it up. Jump up and down on it. Well, no, no, no. So we, we talk, thought about painting it different colors and stuff like that on one side or another. And then Larry said, well, we'll just put a knob on it. <laughs> That way, no which way. I was going to leave it for a reason. Next? Yeah, me too. Okay, we did the tray, I think. Okay, here. You've been particularly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and so have you. You'll be white. <laughs> and, and your partner there will be red. You can go over there so we don't see your faces and we'll see how you do. Well, you... We figured out when you're playing the game, you could have one person on one side and one on the end, or you could all stand together however you wanted to do it. White goes first, I guess. It's That's like racist. Test game. <laughs> Trying to knock the magnet out. Now you're in trouble. See, it's not as easy as you yeah, think, is it? So let me finish it up without me. You got to think about it. You're fine. Mm. What we do for the bathroom break? <laughs> Hans is looking cocky. <laughs> I'm Imagine that. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Alright so. guys, we play a chess here. Yeah. He's lost it's the clock. Beep, 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 beep. Where's the clock? That's right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, this could be a stalemate. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh man, you lost. <laughs> That's great. You won. I won, yeah. Yeah, well, here. 
<laughs> he gets another chicken dinner. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You didn't take the discs out. <laughs> Their discs are so perfect that they stack on top of each other. <laughs> Anybody else want to try? Come on. We've got engineers in here.